There's lots of people who say, I discovered McQueen. No one discovered Alexander McQueen. Alexander McQueen discovered himself. I wasn't very good at school. I was always drawing clothes. He was a very happy child. He was passionate. When Lee was 17, he said, I'll make you a couple of skirts. I've got to say, they fit like a glove. He was drawing from all of these influences. Jack the Ripper stalks his victims. In the early years, Lee had seen violent things. The darkness created genius. Nobody could create emotions like McQueen. You might find him distasteful, shocking, or misogynistic. He made every single headline. I don't want to do a show feeling like you've just had Sunday lunch. I want you to feel repulsed or exhilarated. Going to the depths of one's mind, you start losing who you are, and it becomes the place that you can't get out of. Family keeping ground to be a very superficial business. He thought the whole system was against him. His vision was so extraordinary. Just genius. I saw myself within the public eye as the gazelle, and the gazelle always got eaten. We can all be discarded quite easily. You're there, you're gone. <laughs> It's a jungle out there. I would love to know, I mean, what challenges did you have as an executive producer on this project? So my remit was really to go out and get a lot of the people from Lee's life involved with the movie. And which is huge. Which is big. And, you know, I think a lot of people in Lee McQueen's life get asked on a daily basis. Philip Tracy, everyone. They get asked by China, by Russia, by France, by Spain. Everyone wants to make a documentary about Alexander McQueen. But I have a sort of relationship with so many people who were in his life. I never knew him, I never, never knew him, and I never pretended to know him, but I weirdly knew everyone in his world. So it was hard to, we, we come in peace is what Peter would say. So we would just email, talk to people, meet with them. And you know, a lot of people were just really keen to talk about him. And the ones that were a little bit more hesitant, we just coaxed them and explained that it was a really respectful project. Um, and something that would be really, really honoring his work. So it was, it was hard at first, but I think people, once they met with Ian and Peter and had my endorsement that it was gonna be something really respectful and authentic, a lot of them came round versus being approached by a lot of people that they'd never known from far-flung countries by production companies that they didn't know. So I was sort of part of that family in a way. Um, and I have a series with Apple where I've interviewed a lot of people in the Apple store and make films about visionaries and I think they kind of go, okay, fine, she's legit, you know? So that's kind of where I came in. Um, and it's been an amazing experience because I think I've realized how so many people really wanted to share their thoughts and memories about him but didn't particularly have the right platform. And I think this film, specifically with Someone like Detmar Blow, who's a really, really important part of the film for me and is a dear friend of mine. You know, he, he actually really, he speaks so articulately. I'm glad that we gave him that platform because he doesn't want to go on YouTube with a microphone talking about Alexander McQueen and yet he's got so many relevant things to say. So that's been, for me, that was the challenge in the beginning and now the biggest reward is how many people actually are involved who were really close to Lee. Yes, I was trying to figure out, so just the brand is Alexander McQueen, but he went by Lee to everybody else? Uh, his name is Lee Alexander McQueen. So he went by Lee to friends and his brand was Alexander McQueen. And then, you, like, you, like they said, they're gonna do a documentary about him. I mean, did you have any reservations where you were like, I don't know if I wanna see that, or were you like, yes, please, let's tell his story? Uh, I had a lot of reservations, actually. I, I, I needed to see a little bit more information about Ian and Peter, uh, some films they had done, and, and to talk to them as well quite a lot before I would give access to my information. And then finally, what would you want people to take away from watching the movie? Live your dreams. And please, please get help if you're not having a, a go at life as the way you'd like. I do have McQueen. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> it's a little touch, but this is a very famous print that McQueen made with the, I love with, that. With the skull. And of course, the skull is, is, is such an important motif for him. Um, you know, I think in fashion, you're not really supposed to show um, death 
uh, it, it was one of the many things that he was um, that he confronted people with in the industry. Uh, you know, he had an understanding of mortality from a young age, uh, and he celebrated it. And um, and for us, it's become a very important sort of light motif that runs through the film. Um, we feature various um, various sort of inspired by McQueen, um, various sort of skull imagery, some of which was designed by um, Gary James McQueen, uh, McQueen's nephew, who worked with his mm -hmm. uncle for several years. I read that you went through a lot of hurdles to try to get this made. I'd love to hear like hear about that. Well, it'd be have you got a week to talk to uh, talk uh, about uh, it? Eighteen months. Uh, yeah. actually. What's the most challenging thing about getting this documentary made? I mean, we started with nothing, no access or no archive, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we've we had a very, very tight uh, schedule. So I think those three elements meant that we constantly had to work on the film as well as convincing people to talk to us as well as finding. We never had one moment where we could sit and have everything in front of us and decide how to make the film. It was a constantly rework of new things that were coming in or new people who were managing to interview. I think that was a massive, um, a massive, one of the massive challenges. Yeah, I think that Ian's absolutely right. I, I would say it was, a, it was a, one of the toughest films that I've ever worked on, but also it was a huge privilege because you know this is an extraordinary man whose story is moving and thrilling and funny and harrowing. And, you know, it's not often that you get a subject um, like that to, to make a film about. So, yeah, very privileged.